Okay, so today we are going to show you how to replace a water heater. This is kind of a quick and dirty way of doing things. We're just going to get this sucker yarded out of here. I already have the supply line and the outlet line unhooked. I have the gas unhooked and the valve is off. Also the bottle is turned off. What I do is I have a hose hooked up to it here so we can uh, purge the water out from the tank. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to get this beast out of here. Okay. I've got all this unhooked. The next thing to do is to undo the chimney assembly here. And my plan is on the old one, I'm going to bend these up like this, okay, so I can slide the water heater out. We'll see how that works. Okay, this hot water heater has been here since 1984, and I have a leak in it somewhere, I'm thinking, in here, because I saw the water seeping out from the insulation and down onto the floor. Okay, we're gonna put this new unit in right here. So let's get started. Okay, so I did not want to disturb the chimney. I'm gonna try to get this in uh, here reinstalled without messing this chimney up. So what I did is uh, I took these tabs and I twisted them 180 degrees and then I bent these tabs up so it would actually slide out from underneath here. Okay, so the tank is drained and we've gotten the hose out of here and everything is broken free now so we've got the like I say the gas unhooked and turned off. This uh, overflow uh, valve is unhooked, supply line is unhooked, and our chimney is unhooked. So we're going to yard this old beast out of here. Okay, this sucker came out like butter. No sweat. Alright, so we've cleaned the floor here, mopped all the dust bunnies out, cleaned uh, everything out. And uh, now it's time to uh, install the new unit. Actually, I should say it's time to place the new unit in for a trial fitting. This is going to be the fun part. Okay, so I have the new unit in place. Kind of mocked it up here in place. I've got this overflow here uh, mocked up. It's on a slight angle and I'll work on that a little bit. I've got the chimney pretty much lined up. Now, the inlet and the outlet uh, aren't exactly in the same position as my other one, but I have the flexible copper tubes that I'm gonna hook up. So I will fashion those in here. I think my next worry is, uh, getting the chimney installed so that looks like it could be kind of a bummer but we'll see um, I used this piece here kind of as a reference point when I was sliding it in and uh, luckily that all lined up pretty good so I'm gonna save my gas hookup for last and for the most part I usually replace these uh, flexible uh, gas hookups. I have had uh, them leak before after you move them around a little bit. This is circa 1984. Um, I'm going to actually hook this one back up. The thing, the thing is, is I've never had an issue with this. It's never leaked. I'm going to uh, suds it down when it's all installed and just make sure it doesn't leak. Um, the new fittings, the Home Depot fittings, are made in China. And they're absolute garbage. And I played this game with one of my gas uh, dryers. 
Um, and it was actually the old hose was actually built better than the uh, cheap Chinese crap they're making now. So we'll see how that goes. So the next step is the chimney. Okay, please understand I'm a do-it-yourselfer and I do not play a professional on TV or however that saying goes. So what I did is I bent these ears up to get it underneath here and then the idea is to bend them back down and get these back in their tabs. So I've got a tab here over here 180 degrees I have another tab that is conveniently filled in with insulation so I'm not sure how that's gonna go we'll just stab it down in there then they sent uh, two quarter inch screws to uh, screw these little ears down into here okay so let's get that done okay so that little technique with bending the little dog ears up here worked out really good Okay, this is a slick and clean installation here. So I've got this pin down in here. This one here is screwed in. And I've got that pin down in there, about as far as it's going to go. It was stuffed full of insulation. I've got a good seal around here. Okay. The exhaust is going to flow up there anyway. This fit in the neck exactly like the old one. <clears throat> that's actually a clean install. That's actually, I think, better than the original one. So, woohoo. Okay, next thing is I am going to cinch this up. I'm going to kind of see if I can finagle this pipe around here a little bit and cinch this up. Uh, what you could do if none of this worked out, uh, at Home Depot you can get the, the long pieces uh, that are PVC there's like a neck here and the PVC pipe is flared and you'd put that piece on here and cut it to length and you could go down here like this but um, I uh, thought that I would give this a shot first I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape there okay so let's see here let's uh, what are we gonna do next I'm gonna look at the gas up last and uh, let's start plumbing this puppy so what I've got here is I've got some of these junky ass made in China. It's got to be made in China. Yes, made in China. <laughs> Away we go. Anyway, I've got some of these uh, flexi conduits. What do they call it? Water heater supply line. Universal corrugated copper. Three quarter to three quarter. And I'm going to throw some, I couldn't find any gunk, so I'm going to use um, Teflon tape. I'm not really sure how Teflon tape is going to work on the hot water side, but we'll see. Uh, one of my old buddies, uh, old redneck Bill, he says don't ever use that crap, but uh, we'll see. That seems fairly universal today. And these are brass, I don't know. Oh, look at this. With a rubber washer. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good about this. So uh, let's get one of these installed. Okay, so I've got the cold water. Excuse me, the output. Uh, the uh, hot water out is hooked up now, and you could work this stuff really nice. I've actually never used this product before. This corrugated copper pipe, but it works really good. It's really easy to form. You can do a nice job. So let's do the inlet now. Oh, by the way, should use some needle nose or something, but pull the little plugs out. Don't forget these. Okay, you want to get those out of the way. All right, let's do the next one. Okay, so we have the hot or uh, the uh, the cold water inlet plumbed. Now, it's not quite as nice a bend as this one. 
So it's going to be interesting to see how this reacts because I've never really messed with this. But uh, that's all hooked up. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure that this is shut because I don't know how they shipped it. They shipped it shut. Okay. We're going to tighten this up a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling it up. So I'm going to take a faucet, uh, a hot water faucet in the other room and turn it on while I'm filling this, I think is probably what I'm going to do. Um, just a little bit, just to vent the air out. So let's do that and then we'll check for leaks. Okay, looking good so far. Ooh, we're getting close to having some hot water here. Okay, so the tank is now full. And we're looking for leaks. Everything looks good. Uh, this is in a commercial uh, restroom here, so I have this water heater feeds the men's room and the women's room. The women's room has a, sh has one, a single stall shower. The men's room has a single stall shower. And each room has two sinks. And so what I did is we turned on all the hot water faucets in the men's and the women's room to purge out all the air. You want to get all the air out of here. Alright. All that is gone. Everything looks good. So now, don't freak out if you're feeling the lines and they feel kind of moist. What it is, is it's condensation. There's no drips. All this is perfect. Okay, this is great. Um, what it is, is the water, this is in the middle of winter here in Washington State, and the water is ice freaking cold. And I have the boiler room in here, a nice toasty 75 degrees. God forbid I'd get cold. So that's what's happening, right? We got condensation buildup. Other than that, we are looking good. Okay, now, the overflow line is hooked up and installed. And apparently, do not tear this tag off because it's a federal offense, which just makes me want to do it, but I'm not going to. Alright, next thing we got to do is hook up the gas. Now the deal is, is I don't have any uh, pipe dope for gas, so I've got to run over to the shop and grab a little can of that. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go take the fitting off of the old furnace pull this little bung plug out and put that fitting in and then I can hook this up and then we're gonna spray a little Windex on there and see if we get bubbly bubbles all right let's do that next okay so I have this fitting doped up and on this front side right here that's pretty important because you, you're gonna end up putting this in here this end here, and I'm going to clean this up before I put it on. I just didn't want to get my camera all spuged up with this crap. This is a fluted end here, so, uh, ferruled end, so uh, we don't really need to put this on, but I'm going to do this anyway. So we're going to get this in there hooked up. We're going to apply some uh, propane to it, let that pressure build up. Then we're going to get the old Windex out and uh, check for bubbly bubbles. Excuse me, check for leaks. If it's if it's bubbles, it's leaking. We don't want that. Stand by. Okay, so I now have the gas line plumbed to it, and I've got some Windex on there. And uh, we're just gonna kinda let that sit for a few minutes and see if we have any uh, bubbles. Okay, so we have no leaks, no bubbles, I've purged all the air out of the tank. No drips. Everything's hooked up properly. Everything looks good. So, I'm gonna try to light this with one hand. We're gonna see how this goes. Turn it to pilot. We're gonna push that. And we're gonna push this and hit the igniter. 
Here goes. Still trying to purge the air out. Okay, so I can't do this with one hand, so stand by. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to continue holding this down and hit this button. There we go. Now we've got it going. There was a bunch of air that I had to purge out of this line, so it took me a minute. I just didn't want to do that on camera. No, I just wanted to make sure everything was cool. I have a normal... Uh, uh, code here for the status light which is blue yeah, right there normal operation if I had a red I'd have system problems so because this is new I'm gonna still hold this pilot light on for a minute probably 30 seconds usually seems to do it okay we're gonna un we're gonna let go of the pilot button the pilot's still going so let's power this puppy up let's turn it to Ooh, listen to that. She is rocking and rolling. Okay, so you have VAC, and that's your vacation mode. We have low, which would, uh, I don't really know why you'd use low, honestly, because you have vacation mode. Low, generally, in the wintertime is too doggone low because the source water is just so dang cold coming out of the ground. So, we're going to start off with setting this on A. When this thing finally gets to temperature, I'll go and I'll check the, uh, the water coming out of the faucet. And then we'll just kind of fine-tune it. Generally, I never turn these up to the very hot or all the way. In fact, most of the time I don't even go past halfway. Um, I don't want to scald a customer or some kid, you know, if they don't know how to take a shower or whatever. I just don't want to scald anybody. So I'm not going to really jack this puppy up too high. Okay, no leaks. I can't even smell propane. I mean, this is just awesome. So that's another thing too. If you have a leak, you're going to smell it. and between takes back a while ago when I was doing the uh, the bubbled test and whatnot, you know I had the gas on and everything, but um, you couldn't smell it. So I am reusing this old line, and I'll keep an eye on it for the next day or two, just for giggles. But uh, uh, we're just going to reuse it. I know there's going to be safety sallies out there that are like, no, no, put a new line on. But like I said. When I first started this video, these new lines are made in China, and I just don't trust this crap, this Chinese stuff, so I'm going to continue using this thing. This thing doesn't move around anyway, you know. The the um, the time when I unhooked it from the old heater and flexed it the first time, that's the first time since 1984 it's been flexed, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. This all looks okay. One last check. <sighs> I've got no leaks, no leaks, the flue is warm, look at that perfect installation, okay, so stick with me here, we're going to wrap this sucker up, I'm going to let this thing get to temperature and then we'll wrap up this video. Okay, so this project is wrapped up and done. We are done. New water heater. Uh, let's see if this one makes it that long. I highly doubt it, but I don't know. It's a ream. It may. No leaks. I'm getting warm water out of the faucets. Um, we have the blue light flashing, which is what we want. The old blue light special there. So, because I was putzing around and doing the video and stuff. This took me, oh, I don't know, what, an hour and a half or so. 
Um, I think really the worst part was just going to Home Depot and getting it. I ordered this six weeks ago. It took six weeks to get this up in northwestern Washington because this is an LP, liquid propane hot water heater. A natural gas is going to install the same way. It's just a different burner jet and all that kind of crap. So this is really a basic job. So we're going to rate this. And on the do-it-yourself difficulty factor, actually it was going to be a one. But, eh, I'm getting old. Thing was kind of heavy. So I'm going to drag one more into it. So this was actually a two Mickeys on the difficulty factor. And, um, hey, wait a minute. Where's the other four? Oh, yeah, cool. They're up in the freezer. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you sticking with it. This is like 21 minutes and X amount of seconds out of your life. But anyway, that is how to install or reinstall a liquid propane hot water heater. By the way, this is a 40 gallon model. And it was literally a direct replacement from the other one. Alrighty. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. And I hope this helped you. Please subscribe and please feel free to comment. Oh, remember, don't start on the Mickeys until the job's done. It's like reloading, right? All right, thanks for watching. Later.